T.S. Eliot writes, Since golden October declined into somber November, and the apples were gathered and stored, and the land became brown sharp points of death in a waste of water and mud, the new year waits, breathes, waits, whispers in the darkness. This poem played on repeat in my head this past week as Mikey and I drove up to see my brother Chase and his family in Missouri, looking out over the beautiful, yep, this is why you put page numbers on your sermon, people. looking out over the beautiful landscape as it whizzed by at 70 miles an hour. When we got to my brother's home, we loaded the kids up into their RV and headed out to a campground where we went hiking. At a very uh, more appropriate speed, I took in all the beauty of the leaves changing and the underbrush already turning dark brown. Nature is shutting down. This time of the year is called the locking. It's a time when everything dies or hibernates, suspended, locked in the posture of waiting, hoping for the first signs of spring. This happens every year. Days seem shorter Nights are longer, darker, colder. We too find ourselves in a season that comes around every year. We have purple and candles or big candles out front. It's Advent. And most of us love Advent because it means that Christmas will be here in four extremely short weeks. However, we are given a different type of imagery from our reading this morning. Imagery that is in stark contrast to the cute baby nestled in the manger. Instead, Luke throws a curveball, beginning our quest to the manger with imagery of the end days. The time when Jesus will come again. It'll be scary. No, really, Luke says that in verse 26. Luke tells us that people will faint with fear. Man, Luke, you're taking the Christmas air right out of our sails. You're stopping us in our tracks. Why are we starting with the end? Shouldn't there be a caption at the beginning of this reading in big, bold letters? Spoiler alert! We aren't ready for this. This hasn't happened yet. The baby comes first. He lives. He dies. He's resurrected. He ascends. And then we wait. We live our lives in this great in-between. In between the birth of Jesus, the already, and Jesus coming again, the not yet. Let me put this another way. Do you remember being on a swing? Might have been a while for some of us. Well, you get on the swing, and you back up as far as it'll let you, and then you lift your legs, and then you swing your legs back and forth until you're flying through the air, and it's in that moment, at the top of the swing, when you don't know whether you're completing one sweep or beginning another, or are you just still? The in-between time that doesn't really exist except as 
a sort of moment out of time. The already and the not yet. Jesus, in our gospel reading today, creates for us a doorway, a view of the things to come. And we stand in the threshold of this doorway as he tells us that things are going to be rough. We're going to have to live through wars and pandemics, broken relationships, depression, guilt, anger, death. And it's scary. And sometimes we have to hold each other up when one of us faints. But the great news is, Jesus doesn't stop there. He continues to tell us what is going to happen in the end. He gives us a glimpse of the telos, the end game, the plan to gather all of creation to himself, making us whole again. Out of all that death, struggle, and waiting comes life. Hope becomes reality. Hope happens. Last Sunday, excuse me, <clears throat> last Sunday the youth took Thanksgiving supplies down to a ministry called Gateway of Grace. We met up with a guy named Dennis who works with uh, serving refugee families from Iran, Iraq, and Afghanistan. These refugees who have come to Dallas to start a new life. And each year, Gateway of Grace holds a Thanksgiving dinner for all refugees and their families. They set up two huge pole tents in the courtyard of the Church of the Nativity in Plano. And Dennis told us that they invite around 75 people to the dinner. But however, they plan to serve between two and 300 due to word of mouth. The refugee community is drawn together by common life and similar stories. They come together to break bread, fellowship, and share each other's burdens. They are constantly standing in the threshold of the horrors of the life they left behind and the hope of a better life to come. And so, we too gather in the threshold to hear the stories about Jesus' birth through the live nativity, through the Christmas pageant. We break bread and fellowship with each other during Advent family nights. We gather to study during Wednesday Advent series. We gather on Sundays to read, to pray, and to share a common meal and hope for the day that Jesus comes again. Because it's in this liminal time, standing in the threshold of the already and not yet, that hope happens. Amen.